In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing my strategy for the Valiant Gargoyle fight. This is a rather difficult fight depending on what your setup is, and you're going to see this is a rather long video because I don't exactly have the ideal setup for this fight. However, it will give me a chance to showcase a lot of the attacks and explain how to handle them, so that's great. First up, let's talk about the Valiant Gargoyle itself. In my opinion, it's a lot easier to attack the Valiant Gargoyle when he has his axe out rather than his swords. A lot of time, his attacks with his swords are very erratic. They are a lot faster attacks, and the ones with his axes are slower and they're more predictable. And usually you can just stay under his feet when his axe is out, and you can pretty much dodge just about anything just by even just staying there. Even if you don't dodge roll out of the way, you're generally not going to get hit by most of his attacks when the axe is out, which just isn't the case with the swords. A lot of times when his swords are out, you're going to have to like dodge roll forward and stay as close to him as you can, as you can so that the attacks go over your head. Another really good attack that he does when his axe is out is the one where he raises up in the air and then charges at you, like plummets down. This is a very easy one to read and roll through at the last second in order to get some damage in. So you always want to make sure that you're getting damage in there if you can. It should be, you know, if you've done this fight a few times and you're struggling, that's definitely one you want to look for and you want to be ready for because you can get in some free damage there just about every time. So I highly recommend during this fight, you know, trying to range him when he's using his swords if you can or... If you have a shield, approach cautiously and attack with your shield up. I use barricade shield a lot in this, but if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to block every attack. So, you know, it's a lot easier to block the sword attacks than the axe ones. And what you really want to look out for is when he changes weapons. Anytime you see these, like, sparks come out or he's, like, reaching for his back or something like that, he's changing weapons. And you want to recognize when he's changing weapons because you never want to be near him when he's changing weapons if possible because he usually does some sort of swipe attack. It doesn't matter whether he has the axe or the swords. And the timing on these, depending on which weapons he you know, switches to, is different. So if you think you got the timing down for one weapon, it's not the same for the other. And also, you need to recognize this. This is a good time to learn to recognize this animation, because when you get to the Phase 2 and there are two gargoyles, when they're swapping weapons is a great time to get in some damage. If he ever does the Poison Breath attack in Phase 1, all you need to do is just run away and wait for him to come to you. Keep in mind that this animation, although it looks like it's going to go longer than it does, he can sometimes just snap, break out of, and get aggroed onto you really, really fast. So it, if you don't get out of it very quickly and you're trying to like drink a health potion, um, just be careful because if, you might get hit if you're not fast enough. So the general strategy for Phase 2 is that you obviously want to finish off the weaker of the two Valiant Gargoyles, the one without the Twin Blade. And here is where I switch to ranged attacks. If your character doesn't have a ranged option, you're going to have a very difficult time with this fight unless you have very, very high DPS. Um, the reason for this is if you're up close fighting the gargoyle while the other gargoyle is off your screen, you don't know what he's doing. A lot of times he's casting poison into you that'll kill you really fast if you're not looking for it. Or you might just fly in with an attack from off screen and kill you in one or two hits. So it's very difficult to face him in melee here, particularly when you know you may have to dodge multiple attacks in a row from two different enemies. So if you have any sort of ranged option, this is where I like to kite around and try and range down that target, even if it's not like a ton of damage. You can see in the video here, my Lightning Spear isn't hitting for that much damage, but I'm eventually able to get him down. Again, as I mentioned, with the swapping of weapons animation, where the, the spark's coming out, uh, this is a very good time in this phase to get in some range damage. As soon as you see those sparks on the target that you're facing, start flinging spells or projectiles if you're using a bow or whatever at them because you can usually get in one or two hits, or if you need to take a potion, that's a good time to do it as well. Also, if you're using spirit summons for this fight, I highly recommend using them during the transition from phase one to phase two when the two Gargoyles goals come out. Make sure that you have very, very tanky summons here, or something that's going to stay far away from the boss, because you want one to hold aggro as long as possible while you go ham on the other one, and you don't want it to die any quicker than it has to, because that'll give you more time. So make sure you have a very tanky summons and make sure you upgrade them if you need to. So the Twin Blade Gargoyle, assuming you got the other one down, is definitely the harder of the two. His attacks are more erratic and it makes it hard to stay close to him. But again, just like the Gargoyle before, you either want to be directly under his feet, rolling forward through his attacks and then getting in some attacks, or you want to be as far away as you can. Just like the other Gargoyle too, you want to be on the lookout for when he swaps weapons. This is a great time to get some damage in depending on where you are. If you're close to him, when he swaps to his axe from his twin blade, you can actually get under his feet really quickly and you'll be able to get in some shots really easily because he does like two overhead attacks in a row. You just need to be careful after that because sometimes he'll do an attack 
where he like drags his axe behind him for a second, and if you're behind him or in his feet, it may clip you while he's dragging it along the ground and hit you under your shield or something. One attack that you want to be on the lookout for is where he starts like twirling his blade and there's like wind build up and then he sort of like jumps at you. The best thing I've found to do when this happens is unlock from him real quick if you're target locked and then just run and dive forward when he jumps at you. If you're locked onto him and you hit dodge after your camera angle spins around, you'll actually roll into his attack and you'll take damage. But if you roll forward, he'll jump past you. So make sure you unlock real quick, roll forward, and then turn around and relock on. And lastly, the attack that you really want to be on the lookout for here is where he, like, roars and sort of has this, like, whitish glow around him. He usually goes a little bit berserk when this happens, and he'll slam his axe down doing huge AoE damage. So you don't want to be anywhere near that when possible. Either be directly under his legs so that it goes over you, or you want to be as far away as possible. But I don't recommend trying to, like, roll through that attack and get to him if you're sort of mid-range. 